What up boys, uh, this is going to be the post-raid disc PvP bis list and it's going to include the best stuff that's available right now in phase 1 and I'm going to talk about why I made those choices and why I think they're the best items right now for the current kind of PvP that's going on um, and potentially the PvP next phase as well uh, which is predominantly world PvP, there's not going to be any battlegrounds yet so we've kind of, with that in mind, we've, we've picked items with stats that we think are appropriate We've, uh, we've had a chat with Stream, talked it through. Um, some of the choices I made, we actually revised and we thought, okay, no, this is a better better choice. We might need this this kind of stuff. For example, the 2% hit uh, that comes from the neck and the belt. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to get into it. So for Helm, we've got Halo of Transcendence, uh, which drops off Anixia. And to be honest, this was like easily the best piece for this slot. Uh, Circle of Prophecy came close. Well, didn't really come close, but was the was the closest follow up. You just lose a lot of healing in general. Um, so we went for Halo Transcendence in in the Helm slot. Then Neck, as I said, Neck and Belt. Uh, we, they're the only pieces that provide spell hit. So we we kind of forced to take those slots we want to try and get to four percent right now we can only get to two there's actually two belts available i'll get onto belt later but there's there's actually only one neck with hit on so star of mysterio is kind of the only choice here then we got mantle of prophecy again there's not much else that's anywhere really close to it the other options is potentially going a two-part dread mist set but the stats that you gain from prophecy and the extra mana that you're picking up are relatively significant. Um, so Mantle of Prophecy, easy choice there. Again, with the cloak, Saffron's Drape, there's no other cloaks that really come close. That's from Anixia as well. Uh, so that's that's an easy pickup. Not many people want that, so you might have quite an easy time getting that. It's got some nice arcane res on as well. So you can use it against mages and that sort of stuff. The more arcane res we get. Ideally, we want arcane res and fire res, right? Those are the two best pieces. Frost res is okay as well. But Arcane and Fire are the best if you're going to be looking for like large-scale PvP combat. Because if you have lots of Fire Res, you're going to resist Sappers. If you have lots of Arcane Resist, you're going to resist those Novas. So you're going to survive longer in these massive skirmishes. Even Partial Resists are good, right? So Fire Res and Arcane Resist are the ones right now. Uh, chest, we've got Robes of Prophecy. Again, this was... It was kind of close, but not really. So we had True Face. True, True Face? True Faith is an option... But it doesn't have enough stats on it. It has a lot of healing, but not much else. 27 in, you just can't, can't pass up. Sorry, but the robes just beat it out because of that reason alone. Then you've got a few other stats on, on the robes as well. And you're trading essentially for 50 healing and some MP5. So the robes of prophecy wins out there for me. Other option is Alana's. You can use that if you don't have the robes of prophecy until you have it. But I think the robes slightly beat uh, Alana's, especially when you're considering you know, you're getting set bonuses from it as well. So Robes of Prophecy of the Chest. Braces is an easy Van Braces of Prophecy. There's nothing else really that comes close. Again, you could potentially use Dread Mist for a two set until you get this, but once you get the Van Braces, get them on. They're very good. Uh, weapon, obviously Benediction. There's nothing else that could even comes close. You get so much healing from it and the stats on it are great. Plus 20 Shadow Res and you can switch it to Anathema for different situations. So I'd say definitely Benediction there. Easy to get. Well, relatively easy, considering it's a 50% drop from uh, the Domo chest. So, yeah, no no quibbles there. The only thing I will say, get your Skull of Impending Doom in the offhand. Off, uh, in the offhand. Make a macro to switch to it. Um, and pick up a either Aura Stone Hammer is going to be best for you. Or a Sorceress Blade. Sorceress Dagger, sorry. Is another option. They're both fine for the main hand. Considering you're not going to be having them on much, the stats aren't as important. As long as they've got some decent stamina in on, they're okay. So you could also use um, a Blade of Elven Mage right there if you don't have uh, either of those one-handed epics yet. One, we're still using the Storm Rager. It's Biss until Phase 3, I believe. I'm not sure. I haven't, haven't checked enough into Phase 2 and 3 yet, but it's it's way better than any epic stuff available. Storm Rager, easy Biss here. The, the, I love the wand speed on it as well. Just allows for some really nice micro, so that's an easy pickup, I think. If you haven't got it already, make sure you get that. It's easy to get from a quest, and it's good for so long. 
Uh, gloves, we got Gloves of Prophecy. It's going off the top there a bit, but you know the deal. And the other option here is Gloves of Hyp Hypnotic Flame, which are actually probably a better piece in themselves, but you're going to lose the five set if you go with them. So if you've got them, use them. Um, I think Gloves of Prophecy slightly beats it out once you get the five set. Otherwise, Gloves of the Hypnotic Flame. The the sad thing about this item is you don't gain anything from the fire spell damage. But you have better stam on it, better internet. And you lose a little bit of healing, but you gain damage. So that's that's the options for gloves. Belt is the other one I wanted to talk about with regards to hit. So the other option for belt is the, the Banthok Sash. And essentially has less int, but more damage and healing. And you relatively the same stamina, 9 versus 10. Pretty negligible. Uh, but they both have the hit on. And the hit is the main part of the item. The main reason we're choosing this piece. Because we want to make sure our dispels don't get resisted. That's the most important thing. Or fears don't get resisted. So that's the reason for the clutch of Andros. Obviously the, the prophecy has much better stats on it. But it doesn't have the hit. And right now we need the hit. So it's kind of... It's, it's a lot more detrimental to have a fear resist, right? You're going to use a lot more than these, you know, than the stats from this item provide dealing with the fear resist. So the hit is important. Uh, legs, again, T2. T1 is okay. T2 better. So if you have T1, don't, uh, don't stress too much. But yeah, T2 are just a natural upgrade. They have shadow and arcane resist, which is nice too. And again, there's nothing else really that comes close. So... T2 legs from Rag. Hope for the best. If you get them, you sorted for a little bit. Once we get into phase three, you'll be able to pick up that nice three set, which is probably one of the best set bonuses in the game, I'd say. It's absolutely insane. 15% mana regen while casting does so much, considering how much spirit you have. So, looking forward to that in, uh, in phase three. Uh, Boots of Prophecy, we've got. Pretty much nothing else actually that comes close. Boots of Prophecy is a pretty, pretty solid item. 18 int, 17 stam, and some healing. Got some bonus shadow res on there. Nice versus warlocks. Nice versus other shadow priests. Um, potentially resisting other priest spheres, stuff like that. We've got a few shadow shadow res items. Then we got rings. So we got three options on the rings. We got Court Rising Band, which is actually not unique, so you could use two of them. We've got Band of Sulfurus, which actually has a shitload of int on. Which is, for me, why it's, it slightly beats out Court Rising Band. But potentially, if you get two Court Risings, you can use that too. It comes down to personal preference a bit. And then you have a third option, with, which is the Seal. And I think this is better against Casters. I think the other two are just better for just general general play. Band, probably better for World PvP. Court Rising, better if you're doing slightly larger scale PvP or, or spending a lot of time healing in the PvP. The Court Rising Bands will probably be better in BGs. Whereas the Band of Sulfurus is just, you have more longevity with it, right? The Seal, however, if you're dueling mages or something, has some nice resists on. So it's just going to add to all your other resists. And once you get those stacking up nice and high, you're going to get some decent partial resists. Maybe even some full resists. So I would say hang on to that as well if you get it. Uh, trinkets. Trinkets is a tough one. We've got a few options. So we've got Briarwood Reed. We've got Shard of the Scale. And I feel like we don't have that much regen right now in this set. And I don't feel like the damage and healing is that imperative as Disc. 29 damage and healing. Generally, our our healing is not too bad anyway. We have 383 with this set, which is which is definitely solid. The extra 29 isn't going to make a world of difference as opposed to essentially doubling our mana per 5 while casting. And while you're PvP, you're P yeah, while you're PvPing, you're casting a lot. Can't talk. So I'd say Shard of the Scale is a decent pickup. As for the second trinket, it's going to be anything, really. I mean, if you have Briarwood Reed, you can chuck it in. But most likely, you're going to be NG, right? And you're just going to be switching around stuff all the time. You've got the AGM. You've got, you know, Reflectors. You've got Carrot on a Stick if you're on your mount. Nifty Stopwatch, should you need it. And then, obviously, you've got Death Ray, Dragon Ling, Net, Tidal Charm. There's so many different things you're going to be switching around. And that's kind of the name of the game in Classic is kind of managing your trinkets. So I've left the second trinket slot blank because you're going to be switching that all the time. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's everything I wanted to say with regards to the post-raid 
set. I'm going to do a, a shadow one, one uh, next, and we'll probably do a PvE one as well. A few people have been asking for a PvE one, so we'll do, we'll do one for that as well, if you guys are interested. Uh, and I'll chuck it all up on Deathblind so you've got a visual representation of it as well. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully it was helpful. And see you next time.